Hey guys, this is MJ and Alan at His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is more imminent today than it ever has been. Hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Um, we are at a place called Helen State Park. It is amazing here. It leads down to the beach. Um, let me give you guys a closer up view. Look at these trees. This old house was built in the 1930s. Look at these trees. Absolutely beautiful. They have a pumpkin patch. That's why the wooden is all set up for these little wooden crates they have a pumpkin patch every year. But there's a dock down here. Alan is sitting down there. Alan! Oh, he's rocking on the chair down there. But, I mean, just check this house out. It is just amazing. We have some friends that got married here. Just thought you guys would enjoy this view here. Well, anyway, today is the letter U in our journaling. I hope you guys are journaling and taking advantage of journaling because it's amazing God really uses journaling um, to help encourage us and to show us sometimes what we don't even know ourselves is going on. That's been my case for many, many years. Um, so journaling has been a very therapeutic tool. This is like a wraparound porch here. But on Sundays, I do the ABCs of journaling. Right now we are on the letter U. U for up, how's that? We are going up, praise God. Soon and very soon. So, I don't know, you can use any word, you know, for the letter, but if y'all are on board with journaling, if you're not, why not? Um, but I wanted to make this a short video, and um, I just thought this was just such an appropriate place to do this. I love to sit on these rocking chairs. But, um, you know, we know that spiritual warfare is off the charts right now. I know that it is. Um, just having to have this surgery for the second time has got me crazy, like lost five months. <laughs> um, but God, you know, Romans 8, 28 is my favorite scripture and God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And that's us, each and every one of us who are Christians who belong to him. He works all things together for good, not some things, all things. Even this, even this surgery, even what you are going through right now, no matter how horrible it may seem, um, you don't give the enemy any glory. Satan is a created being. God created him for his very own purposes. And whatever the enemy has meant for harm in our lives, I can testify to the fact that God will use it for good. And that's fulfilling scripture, Romans 8, 28. Um, whether it's sexual abuse, physical abuse, um, fill in the blank, um, God uses it for his own personal glory. We're, guys, at the last final moments in this dispensation called grace. I know it, we all know it as Christians. Um, we are living in the shadow of the tribulation and everything that the Bible said that was going to happen in these final moments is happening right now. So Jesus told us to lift up our heads and look up for our redemption draws near. And um, that we would know the season. And guys, we're in that season. And what a glorious time to be alive and well, alive and his in these final moments. Um, so what do we do? We share the gospel. We know we're going up. Um, we stand united. That's another you. We stand united knowing 
that we've won because it's Jesus Christ that's in us that is making us strong. It's what he has done. It's his righteousness, not ours. Um, we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not come into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might all be saved. But not all of us will. There is an enemy. We do have an enemy. Satan is a liar. He is a murderer. He's been a murderer from the beginning. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. And although he cannot take our salvation, he cannot take a prodigal salvation, and a prodigal is saved, there is no partial rapture. So regardless of what you have heard, um, regardless of what your pastor or teachers or relatives have told you, a prodigal is eternally saved because it is a gift. Um, and God does not take his gifts back. So you don't give a gift to somebody and take it back because they're not performing according to your dictates. So there's a lot of false teaching going on in the body of Christ. And that's on purpose. Satan is a liar, remember? And he does what he does well. I hate to give him a compliment, but he does what he does very well. Um, so don't let him continue to lie to you. I allowed him to lie to me for many years while I was in the throes of a horrible addiction. Opiates, cocaine. Um, I lived a lifestyle that was contrary to that of a Christian. But had I died in my addiction, I would have immediately been with the Lord. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Although I was in sin, and I know that to be a fact, regardless of how many people would argue with that, um, that's the enemy's lie, guys. That we have to be a certain measure up to a certain standard in order to receive the gift of salvation. We don't maintain that gift of salvation. It is a gift. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. This is the most important thing you will hear me say in this video if you're not born again, if you're not saved. So please pay attention because we are in the final moments of the end of this dispensation called grace. So the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day rose again, according to scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. Um, Jesus said we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven, that the only way to the Father is through the Son. Not Buddha, Muhammad, the prayers of your ancestors, your works don't get us there. Um, our works don't get us anywhere. We're saved for works, but we're not saved by those works. So how do we get there? We're born into this condition called sin, all of us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, the Bible says. So that excludes none of us. It includes all of us. Even people who are doing good things. We're born into a condition called sin. And we need to be born again into a condition called righteousness. Whose righteousness? Christ's righteousness. It has nothing to do with us. It's his righteousness. When he said, it is finished on that cross, it was finished permanently, eternally. Our sins, past, present, and future, were forgiven the moment we believed. Okay, so how do we get there from point A to B? A is to simply, okay, so I admit and I acknowledge that I am a sinner in need of a savior. B is to believe, and this is key, and this is the, the entire gospel. Believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. And C, call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, not might be saved, not might be saved if you join a church or if you maintain your salvation. You can't maintain your salvation, friends. 
Jesus Christ did it all on the cross. When he said to Telestai, it is finished. That meant the sins for this whole wide world were forgiven. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world completed the work that needed to be done. So in God's eyes, when God the Father looks at us, our sins are completely washed in the blood of the Lamb. But the enemy, he likes to put little suggestions in our head. You know, you're not good enough. You, you can't be saved unless and until those are lies. Don't take any glory away from Jesus Christ's work on that cross. When he said it is finished, it was finished. So you simply believe that, that you're a sinner in need of a savior. Believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and call upon his name. And I wouldn't wait. I would not wait another second, friends, because we're going up. Okay, what is the rapture? The rapture is when that trumpet sounds, and it could sound right now while I'm doing this video. Um, the dead in Christ rise first, and we, this final generation, I believe, who are alive and remain, are caught up with them, harpazoed in that air, caught up, snatched up, and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words, encourage one another as we see the day approaching now we wouldn't be told to encourage one another with these words if we were going to go through the tribulation because in the tribulation um saints will be beheaded for their faith um the tribulation is going to be the most horrific horrific time on this planet and so we wouldn't be told to encourage one another as we get our head chopped off on the block. Um, that doesn't make sense. So if you think we're going through the tribulation, you need to rethink that because we are not appointed to wrath. Jesus took every bit of that wrath on the cross. So we are not appointed to that wrath. And praise God for that. We will be raptured. We are the bride of Christ. We will be raptured before the tribulation. And the 70th week of Daniel is, that's not for us. The tribulation is not for us. The tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation. To quote J.D. Farag, and if you haven't, I haven't listened to J.D. Farag yet today, um, that's jdfarag.org if you don't have a pastor, if you don't fellowship somewhere. Again, that's jdfarag.org. I would highly recommend that you listen to his prophecy updates. Um, he also gives a regular Sunday teaching, but um, he gives a prophecy update every Sunday. Um, so I would encourage you to listen to that. Um, he will bring you up to speed real fast. But so um, get your journal, your pen, your Bible, and just draw near to God, guys, because it is so important. The Bible says if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. And who doesn't want God to draw near to us? I mean, we need his peace right now like we never needed it before. And Jesus said, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as this world gives you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We need that strength. Just know that whatever you're going through is temporary, okay? And where we're going to, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. And we're going. Guys, we're going up. I mean, the worse the news is, the better it is for us. You know? Uh, I hate to say that. I hate to see the the news get worse, and especially, especially what's going on here with Saudi Arabia and Israel. And um, don't want to say a whole lot because a lot of people are getting strikes on their channel, which is ridiculous. But um, just a whole lot going on, and it's fulfilling Bible prophecy daily. Okay, um, and I'm excited. 
I'm excited and you guys should be excited. Please know that I'm praying for you and yours daily and I'm praying for your prodigal. And, um, you know, our prodigals, the um, Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. And that's what's happening is prodigals are out there perishing for lack of knowledge. So we just continue to pray for them just as my great grandmother prayed for me. And, um, and know that God's got them in the palm of his hand. And God answers prayer. So we're not praying in vain. Just because he doesn't answer right now doesn't mean that he's not answering. And just because he th doesn't answer the way we think he does, and thank God he doesn't because we're not God, so we don't know how he should answer. Um, we pray for his wisdom, and I pray for wisdom on this sh for everyone on this channel each and every day. And the Bible says if you pray for wisdom, God will give it to you. So he will give us that wisdom. So as we see the day approaching, guys, draw closer to the Lord and know that he's got you in the palm of his hand. And he's more excited about the rapture than we are, guys. He's more excited to, to be with us than we are him. So I'm going to just end this here um, and share a poem with y'all. Um, let's see. These little doors. Okay, then just remember to put on your full armor. So this is called the armor. Very gently the Lord spoke tonight and he told me of these things. Let go of your pride and follow me for there is healing in my wings. I promise it won't be hard for you for my yoke is easy and light. I have enrolled you, child, in my race, and I will enable you to fight. And remember to put on your armor to quench the fiery darts and know that they can't penetrate beyond the walls of your heart. It is I who lives inside you, so why tremble or be afraid when the enemy provokes you with lust of the flesh and pleasures you one time craved? Let me warn you now that it's only a trap, a thought he'll sometimes use to try to make you linger and ensnare you with his views. When he gets you where he wants you, he'll try to convince you to see that you are no longer worthy and it's useless to seek me. But these are the times when it's imperative that you must turn within and know that he is a liar and has no power to make you sin. I am he who overcame it all, especially for you. And I understand temptation and the grief he tries to produce. How can I explain to you my mighty power that lies within? I'm sure it'll be through experience that you will learn to win. You win every time you trust me and know that I am strong and believe that I will rescue you and place in your heart a song. I never said it would be easy, but I did provide the way. And I heard your prayer that lonely night when you asked me to mold the clay. How about that squirrel, guys? That was the cutest squirrel. He came to visit us. Anyway, um, I'm gonna let y'all go and just know that Jesus loves each and every one of you more than we could ask, think, or ever imagine. And um, we're going home. We're going up soon and very soon. We're going to see our King. I love you guys. Until next time, keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. God bless you guys.